We are starting the 6-3 lesson today, which really isn't that much different from our last lesson. It's still multiplying polynomials, but it's specific to a binomial times a binomial or a binomial times a trinomial. So nothing too different as far as success criteria. You still need to be able to distribute, to recognize and combine like terms, to use the product rule when necessary, and to make sure your answer is in standard form. So we'll take a look at that today. I'm recording now. I'll link it in the slides once I upload it to YouTube. So it'll be in there before the end of the school day. If you want to check out some videos from the past years, they're linked in here too. And then I didn't put the practice on the back table just because I didn't want you guys to like finish it today and then have nothing to do tomorrow. Because that's so far, it looks like we're finishing the notes today. Um, and then tomorrow you'll pretty much have the whole class period to work on your practice and your exit ticket. So that I'll give you tomorrow, but it's just going to be even the odds that I'm going to hold you accountable for. But given that I'm giving you a whole hour, I might have you do the whole thing. So we'll just have to see. The late work from the blue folders that is due by this Friday. So unless you have some like special circumstance, it's due this Friday. All right. Um, some of you know who you are. If you had a special circumstance, like if you're gone five days, then you can have five days. So equal to the amount of days that you're absent. So don't put it off any longer. If you know that you turned it in, but it still says missing an infinite campus. As long as you know it's turned in and it says that in Schoology, because that's where everything gets uploaded to, then you are good. All right. It's timestamped. It lets you know when you turned it in. It'll be updated within seven days. If some for some reason it's been more than seven days, then yeah, there might be a problem there. But other than that, it'll be uploaded or updated. So it looks like we'll have an exit ticket tomorrow, another one on Thursday, potentially one on Friday, hopefully getting done with all like the teaching this week. So that next week on Monday we'll review and Tuesday you'll take your test. All right, so it's getting close to the next topic test, but it's just operations of polynomials. If you think what we've been doing is pretty easy, then great. If not, then just make sure we're taking good notes so that you can use them on your test. So questions. All right, then. So on the note sheet, looks like this. First, we're talking about multiplying binomials. So what is a binomial? What was that? It's not one term. What does bi mean? Two terms. So we're talking about two term expressions. So like a bicycle has two wheels, binomials have two terms. So in this case, it's something like this. And there can be variations, there can be minuses, something like that. Um, so a binomial times a binomial. There's two methods that you can use to solve multiplying binomials. One I just call double distributing because you'll see later on that double distributing or distributing in general is what you can use anytime you're multiplying polynomials. All right, there's also another method called FOIL, which maybe you've learned before, but that method only works with binomials. So it just depends on your preference. But either way, they're doing the exact same thing. So if I double distribute in example one, so that means I'm taking the X from the first term and multiplying it by both the terms in the other set of parentheses. And then I still need to go back and multiply that two by the other terms in the parentheses. So I have to distribute twice because now instead of one thing being outside the parentheses, there's two things. Does that make sense so far? So we'll distribute it. 
So what's x times x? Good. And then x times 4? Good. And then we're distributing that too. So what is 2 times x? And it's positive, so put plus 2x. And then what is 2 times 4? Then before you box that up and say that that's your answer, check to see if there's any like terms you can combine. Is there? Good, so I have two X terms. What do I get when I combine them? Six X. Six X, and it's positive, so make sure you put plus six X. All right, then bring down the other terms that don't have like terms, like the x squared and the eight. And you want to just check, make sure there's no other like terms you can combine. Check to see that it's written in standard form, which it is. And then that's your answer. All right, so a binomial times a binomial, you get a trinomial. So questions about that? Yes? Yes. All right, then example two, we'll use the FOIL method. So, and it's listed out here and it also shows you. I'm gonna multiply the first term in each set of parentheses. So what's two X times X? Good. And then you're gonna multiply the outer term in each parentheses. So the 2x times negative 5, those are both the outer terms. What's 2x times negative 5? Uh, Good, negative 10x, so make sure you put minus 10x. Then we multiply the inner terms. So 1 times x, what's that? One. X positive, so put plus 1x. And then we're multiplying the last term in each parentheses. So one times negative five, which is negative five. All right, so that's with the FOIL method. Look at the problem, are we finished? What do I do? Good, so I have a negative 10x plus one x. What do I get when I combine them? Good, bring down the other terms that don't have like terms. So 2x squared and minus five. Is it in standard form? Yes, so it's an ABC order with a higher exponent first. So yes, it's in standard form, we are finished. But even if we chose to double distribute in example two, you'll notice we get the same exact thing. So if I had done 2x times x, get 2x squared, 2x times negative 5, negative 10x. And then same thing down here. 1 times x is 1x, 1 times negative 5 is negative 5. So it's really just your preference, all right? So last hour, my class liked the double distributing more because it's like one thing to memorize versus two things to memorize. But it's up to you. So questions about the examples. All right, I'm gonna have you guys try number one. And we'll try number five. So one and five, you guys will try those. Use whatever method you want. I suggest try both. Try one with double distributing, one with boiling. Um, so I'll show you with double distributing in one and then in five we'll foil just so that you get both um, experiences. So first with double distributing, you multiply the first term by the other set of parentheses. So what's y times y? Good, what's y times one? One y or just y, good. And then you distribute what next? The 8 by the other set of parentheses. 8 times y is 
good and it's positive. So put plus eight Y and eight times one is good. What do I do next? And what are my like terms? Good, so what you'll notice when it's a binomial times a binomial, the middle terms, I'll say, cause I'm not, I don't know, I haven't seen it any other way, but don't quote me. Like 99% of the time you have to combine the middle terms. So what's y plus eight y? Nine y, good. Bring down the other terms that don't have like terms. Nine y was positive, so make sure it's plus nine y. And then just check it, is it in standard form? Yes, so we're finished there. So questions on number one. All right, number five was the next one I had you try. And this time I'll show you with the FOIL method. Either way, it's the same thing as double distributing. It even comes out in the same order. All right, but with the FOIL method, that says multiply the first term in each set of parentheses with 4x times x. x squared. Good. Outer term in each parentheses with 4x times 3. Uh, 12x. Inner terms, what's a negative 7 times x? Uh, and then the last term in each parentheses. So negative seven times three, what do we get? Good. And again, if you did double distributing, you should still have the same exact first line as us. Now, what do you usually have to combine after the first step? Your like terms. And when it's a binomial times a binomial, they'll usually be the middle term. But it's 12x minus 7x, which is 5x. And it's positive, so put plus 5x. Bring down the other terms that are there that don't necessarily have like terms. And then are we finished? Is it in standard form? Yes. So then that's our final answer. You can box it up. So questions on number five. All right, let's look at 10 real quick before going to the back page. Uh, so go ahead and try 10. I'll give you one minute to try number 10. All right, so what did we notice in number 10? What happened? So let's see, maybe you're just too scared to say because we haven't seen it yet. Um, so what method did you use? FOIL or double distributing? Double distributing. So we'll do that then. So that means you distributed the 3w to both terms. What's 3w times 3w? Good. 3w times negative 1? Good. And then you distribute the other term, the 1, to both terms. So what's one times three W? And it's positive, so put plus three W. And then what's one times negative one? Negative one. All right, next step is to combine like terms. What are my like terms? And what do I get when I combine them? So they cancel out. So don't put one W. You don't even need to put zero W because that's not fully simplified. All right, they cancel out equals zero. There's no more W terms other than the W squared. Make sense? So what's your final answer? Good. So I know earlier I said a binomial times a binomial gives you a trinomial. I guess not all the time. All right, but usually it gives you a trinomial unless the middle terms cancel. All right, so questions about 10. All right, let's look at the back side. So number 15 through 18, we'll look at next. Because those are still a binomial times a binomial. They're just written a little differently. And those are the ones that I think 
are the most missed questions on the test because kids always look at it and they want to do the power rule for some reason. All right, you can't do the power rule when there's a plus or a minus in the parentheses. You just can't. Your answer is not going to be x squared plus 14, or not 14. It's not going to be x squared plus 16. All right, because there's a critical first step here. So in this free space, write this down. If it's a plus b squared, in parentheses like that, or a minus b squared, in parentheses like this, then your first step needs to be that you expand it. All right, first step is to expand it. So in number 15, instead of writing it like this, we'll write it as x plus four in parentheses times x plus four. Because what do exponents tell us to do? To multiply whatever base it is by itself, however many times that exponent says. So it's saying to multiply this set of parentheses by itself two times. That's why you need to write it like that. All right, so don't skip that first step. You need to expand it. Questions on the first step? All right, and then once you expand it from there, what do you do? You foil or double distribute. Good. So write that in there just so that it doesn't look like there's only one step. So step two would be to foil or double distribute. What do you guys like better? Double distribute. All right, no problem there. So double distribute, what's x times x? Uh, x squared. And x times four? Four x. Right, and then distribute that four to the other set of parentheses. What do you get when you distribute the four? Um, Good. And they all happen to be positive, so that's why there's plus signs in there. Um, you guys, you watch your sign. If it's a positive times a negative, put a negative. All right, but good. And then next step from here would be to, which are my middle terms usually, what's 4x plus 4x? Yes. Bring down the other terms that were there. So our answer is x squared plus 8x plus 16. I can't tell you how many kids on the test, even after me telling you, will say that the answer is x squared plus 16. All right, they completely forget the middle term. So questions on 15. All right, I want you guys to try 16 and 18 on your own. So don't forget these steps right here. So what's the first step in number 16? Expand it. How does it look expanded? Good. So P minus 7 in parentheses times P minus 7 in parentheses. Next step is to do what? Good. This time I'll do foiling. And I know you guys said you don't like that one as much, but I'll just still show it to you anyway. So foiling, first term in each set of parentheses. What's P times P? Outer term next. So I have P times negative seven. What do I get? Inner term is next, negative seven times P. And last terms, so I have negative seven times negative seven. Good, positive because a negative times a negative gives me a positive. Good. So that's like the tricky one, I guess, with the signs. So that's why I say, like, watch this. All right, next step would be what? And my like terms are, um, and when I combine them, I get, what's negative seven minus seven? Not zero. Negative 14. 
Even if you need to check it on a calculator, do that. On a test, I check everything with a calculator, even just like addition problems. All right, so feel free to check it with a calculator. And then look at the answer. Is it in standard form? So we're finished. You should have had P squared minus 14P plus 49. Questions on 16. All right, I think 18 was just a little more challenging because there's more letters in there. But after our lesson on exponent rules and multiplying polynomials, I have faith in you. All right, so 18, first step is to expand. So it should look like this. A plus 3B in parentheses times A plus 3B. This time, which method do you guys want to use? All right, so then what's A times A? H squared. And then A times 3B. Good. And then just to kind of keep it with like the standard form rules, put it in ABC order. So like 3AB. And then distribute the second term. 3B times A is 3AB. I'm just order them so that they're in standard form. And then 3B times 3B is good. Are we finished? No. I need to combine like terms, which for these will usually be in the middle. What's 3AB plus 3AB? Just 6AB. Because when you combine like terms, don't change the variables or exponents. Just combine the coefficients. So 6AB, bring down the other terms that were there. The 6AB was positive, so make sure you put plus. And the 9B squared is positive. Now, is that in standard form? Yes, and if you don't remember standard form, you can write it over here in this free space somewhere. Um, but standard form. That's where you have it in ABC order with the higher value exponent first, if there's like multiple of the same letter. So ABC order is always more important. Um, so you see the terms with A's, those need to be written before the terms without an A. And then since there's multiple A's, that's when you go in order of higher exponent. That's why A squared is first then this term. All right. Um, some people ask, well, B squared has a higher exponent than B to the first. Why don't we write that one before it? Again, ABC order is more important. So you want to write all the A terms before the ones without it. Make sense? All right. So the last like situation we're going to look at is when we have a binomial times a trinomial. So what's a binomial? Good, bi means two. And trinomial means three terms. Good, so a two term times a three term, which you can see here. In these situations, you have to double distribute. There's no other option. That's kind of why I think my students gravitate towards double distributing in all situations, because it'll never leave you wrong. All right, if you try to foil in these ones, it will leave you wrong in these ones. So you have to double distribute. So if you look at 19, we're distributing the X to all the terms in the other parentheses. What's X times X squared? X cubed, good. What's X times three X? And x times negative six. Good. And I'm probably gonna write too big. You guys try and fit it in this box. All right, because I still have that four that I need to distribute. So what's four times x squared? And four times three x. Positive twelve x. Good. And four times negative six. Negative 24. 
So it's just longer. It's more things that you have to multiply. But it's still double distributing. It's just now there's more terms. All right, after distributing, what do you usually have to do? <coughs> Combine like terms. And my suggestion would be start with the higher value exponent so that your answer can already be in standard form when you're done. And for the sake of time, I'll just kind of go a little faster. So like I would start with X cubed, even though there's no other like term I need to combine for that one. I know it needs to be written first for standard form. All right, next terms would be the X squared terms and there's multiple. So what's 3x squared plus 4x squared? Oh, 7x squared. Good. And then the x terms would go next. What's negative 6x plus 12x? Uh, positive 6x. Positive 6x. And then constants will always go last. There's only one left. Already in standard form because we did it like methodically. So we're finished there. All right, tomorrow we'll do some new tries on the note sheet, and then you'll have time to practice.